In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, tapered ranges and specifically on splitting and optimizing tapered ranges so we can reduce our number of rebar within our bending schedule. So that's the main aim. So I've just got three arbitrary slabs there. The first one, the small one, is to introduce us to the tapered range and the split and the optimization of the split. The second one, we'll see if we've got a dual tapered range, how we can optimize the bar so they can come out the same. <clears throat> because there is a bit of a catch in this one. And then the third one is I want to uh, try and split this up into two sets of stock bars and then we'll optimize the remaining uh, tapered bars to again reduce the bar. So the focal focus on, on, on this exercise is to try and understand tapered ranges, uh, try and understand the settings that Tecla gives us to, to work with tapered ranges and then lastly to optimize the use bars so we can uh, reduce our bending schedule length. Okay, so we'll start and what I'll do is I'll just um, fit that to my workspace so we only see that. I'll go into a transparency mode and I'll flip it into 3D so we can see. Okay, so let's start by just putting in some basic reinforcement. And uh, what I'll do is I'll load my defaults just to cancel any settings I may have made. And then for the uh, bar, I'm going to pick a 16 and then I think the rest is okay. So what I'll do is when I click there, I'll pick the bottom leg. And I'll say OK. And then what we can do is now I am in a uh, colored group setting already, and I'll just switch it off for now. Now, if we look at this, we can see that Tech has already given us some form of a taper. Yeah, it's grouping two bars together. Now, if I click on this bar and I head over to our property pane and I look under tapered settings, I can't see any values here. So, where does Tech get these step tapers from? Well, the answer lies in the file menu. If we go to settings and we head over to options and once the dialog box opens we can pick a rebar sets and on the rounding and step tapering tab we have some predefined settings that uh, comes with the localization and if you look at step tapering on straight first and last legs intermediate legs there's a setting of 50 at the moment so what tech is doing is it's using those values as default values to deal with uh, tapered bars so <clears throat> In this case, this is not correct. They wouldn't do something like that because they are not adhering to cover here. So what we can do is if we click on that bar, we can go to step tapering and in this drop down we can say none, apply none. That will fix it up for us. Now we've got our cover on all sides uh, sorted out. The solution to this bar or this slab, I mean, you could produce something like that, but you can have individual bars. But if you have a slab that's a bit longer and you have split bars or splitters in any form, you can then utilize the optimization quite effectively. So we'll go to splitter. Once again, I'll load my standards and I'll just split the slab somewhere around the center. Doesn't really matter where it is. And then we look at that. Now, once we look at that and I go to visibility and I say group uh, color groups, we can now see we're dealing with two main groups, the blue bars, which are all the same. So that should be one line in the bending schedule. And if we look at the top green bars, we do have a tapered range and they should be individual bars in the schedule. So if we click on the bars and we say inquire, we can see we have our 16 bars grouped together. They're all of one size. And then we have our 16 other individual bars to give us a total of 32. So the focus now is to try and reduce these ones, this, this tapered range. So how do we do that? If we now click on this, this rebar set, and we head over to our tapered range settings, which is on the side here, we can now say, we wanna um, optimize by distance and we'll plug in the 50 millimeters that it gets from the default value or that it had in the default value. And once we say that, you can see now, because we've introduced the splitter, Tickler will respect the cover up the side and it will actually accommodate the uh, tapered uh, overlap in the in the um, uh, lap length itself. Now, if we just investigate here a little bit and we do a measurement of the shortest lap and we do a dimension on the longest lap, we can see what Tecla has done here. Um, if we look at the 700, if we click on the bar and we go to the tapered settings and we look at the taper, you can see the standard lap, lap for a 16 millimeter bar according to our localization, which is Australasia, is 700 millimeters. So the smallest lap in the group will adhere to that. And then depending on what your, what, what your value is that you set, in this case we had 50, it will then try and 
uh, uh, give us bars in a group, but that not exceeding the 50. So you can see the next bar is at 739. So it's included in this group. And the next bar would have been over 750. So it's excluded. So it starts a new group. And, and that's pretty much how that works. So if we, for instance, say, hey, um, we don't care about the 50. Let's make it 100 millimeters. And we say, OK. And we now look at our tapered range. We can see we've got three. And again, if we just look at the measurements, we now have this nominal, nominal, which would be 700. We've got our next one, which will be 739. And if we now look at this one, it's still within, it's 777. It's still within that 100 millimeter tolerance. So it's obvious that the next bar will be over 100 millimeters. So a next group is formed. So in essence, all of these bars, the minimum lap will always adhere to the minimum lap that you've specified in the property pane, whether it be the standard lap or a customized lap, that will be the one that's applied to the smallest group. And the one subsequently, the, the, the increase will be limited to whatever you feed in as a step value. We can also click on these bars, go to our step tapering type, and then go for a number of bars and say, irrespective of the dimension, I want to group five bars together. And once we put in the five, then we say enter. And we look at the bars, we can now see that we've got five bars in a group. And we have our straight bars down the bottom. Now, if we now look at our schedule, if I click on that and say inquire, we can see how much that schedule has been reduced. We still have our 16 straight bars down the bottom as one line. And then we have three groups of five bars varying in length. And we have one additional bar, which is the end that doesn't belong to a group bar. Uh, you know, it's just by itself. So this is this is pretty good the way that Tecla understands. As soon as you use a splitter, it knows that the tapering follows the cover and the, the extra is taken up in, in, in the lap. And, and this is the smart way of detailing. Uh, if you have a small little slab and you only have one bar, then unfortunately you will have to stick to tape it. Uh, you know, each individual bar is a taper and there are valid cases of that where that is indeed applicable. So just moving on to the next slab, I'll say uh, fit entire model. And then we can isolate this slab by fitting the workspace to that slab only. And in this lab, what we're going to do is we're going to use the, um, by face, I am going to load my standards just to cancel out any settings I may have made. And then for the bar size, I'm going to pick the 16 main again and say, okay. And now if we hover over this, you can see how with the, the face, our tickler will try and align these bars with whatever face your cursor is closest to. You can see there. And that is irrespective of what you have at the bottom here. So in this case, we do want the, the bars in that orientation. So I'll just click. And now if we look at it, we can see it's added it into the bottom for us. And we have a single group. And um, I'll just switch off the group coloring. And now if we look at this set and we go inquire, we can see we've got 16 individual bars. All have a different length and a, a different number. So what we can do with these is we can split these up. So if I click on this bar, and for this exercise, I'm just going to move the uh, guideline out of the way a little bit. So I'll click on the bars, head over to the splitter, load my defaults, make sure that I'm splitting in the middle and I'm using a standard lap. And then what I'll do is I'll just hover over to the middle of the slab and I'll split it there. Now, the first thing of note here, and I'll just leave it highlighted here. The first thing of note here is although we have splitted this slab smack bang in the middle, we can see we have a difference in length here. On this side, the bar seems to be 4084.55, and on that side, it's 4094.05. Now, um, uh, what is the issue with that? Well, the issue with that is, uh, or the explanation on why that is, is if you just look at where that bar is, if you draw a construction line through the center of that bar, and you draw a construction line through the center of that bar, and you look at this tapered face, they're actually two different lengths, because this bar is now sitting, sitting beside that bar, not on top of it, and they have different lengths. Now, there are there are immediate fixes to that. So what we can do to get them the same, if we click on that bar, we can now clearly see the difference there. So that's taken up by the splitter tolerance. So if we look at the difference, we're looking at um, approximately 10 millimeters. So if we round this up to five and we round that up to five, that will give us a, a 10 millimeter difference exactly. So let's fix up the rounding of the bars first. And the way we do that is by going to the file menu again, going to settings and on the options bar, 
we can then uh, click on the rebar sets and under rounding and step tapering, you'll see there's an entry there that says rounding up at splitters. At the moment, I've got it at zero and that was deliberate. Our environment normally ships with a five millimeter value in there, but I made it zero to illustrate how that works. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, give me a five millimeter tolerance rounding up to five millimeters or we can even say rounding up to 10 but let's leave it five and if i say apply okay this will not do anything what you have to do is go to more and say regenerate the set now it will regenerate the set and if we now click on the bar we can see we've got rounded values and sometimes um, i don't know why we don't get all our values listed i'm not quite sure if it's got something to do with my graphics card but you can see the values here are more rounded and I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, if I click there, well, it doesn't show it, but uh, for some reason, but you can clearly see here from these dimensions here that, um, you know, we now have rounded values in increments of five millimeters. Now, the next thing we want to do is if we just click on, on, on these bars again, we can see that uh, that bar there is five, uh, five, five, four, five, and this one here is five, uh, triple five. And if we look at our bending schedule, although we've split it, we've split this and we've got round values, we would expect to be uh, bars listed at two, 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 two in a bar. Now, if we go to inquiry, we actually don't have that. We've got single bars, 32 single bars. So how do we deal with that? Now, the, the, the easiest way to deal with that straight off the bat is to say, I've got 45 here, I've got 55, that's 10 millimeters. So if I move this splitter five millimeters, it should sort that out and we should have equal bars. So if I click on the splitter and I head over to the split offset and I say five moles, enter five moles. Now we can see if we now click on the bar, we've got a triple five zero this side, and we've got a triple five zero that side. And now if we go inquire bar, we have groups of two, 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 two. two. And that has already left us with half the amount of lines. So we've got 16 lines and, and 32 bars, but we can optimize that even further. Now that we've got the same bars either side, what we can do is um, see if we can get more out of it. And the way we do that is by introducing the step tapering again. And yeah, we can just go straight to, I want to group uh, bars in, in, in number, and I want three, three bars to be in a group. And once I do that, Tickler automatically, you can see it's now adhering to the round number of borings, but at the same time, you can see how it labels this bar, skips one, excuse me, uh, it labels one bar, skips bar, and labels the other one, they have the same. They're in group of three, that's three, three, three. And if we put in our color coding, we can now see that Tickler has grouped those green ones together, these blue ones, so they're all in groups of three, but these green ones and those blue ones are actually the same, because if we now click on those bars, you can see the lengths are exactly the same. And if we right click and we go to inquire, we've reduced that number of lines even more. So you can now see we've got six in a line. It's three this side and three on the opposite side that are now exactly the same bar. So we've really achieved a lot. I mean, only the last two can't fit in as a group because we just don't have enough bars, but all the others are in groups of six. So this is how you can reduce the amount of bars quite significantly. Um, by using a, a, a tapered settings and also by using bar rounding as per the file setting menu. Okay, now lastly, what we can do is if I right click and I say uh, fit work area to entire model, we can have a look at uh, how we can deal with tapered, range, tapered ranges and stock bars. So if I also limit that uh, work view to that slab, we can now go to the same face settings and again, I'll just load my standards in case I've set any, made any uh, uh, changes. And I'll go to the main once again, and I'm happy with the 200. So what I can do is just hover over this and click, and there we go. We've got um, a tapered set. So if we right click and we say inquire, we can see we've got 16 bars. They're all of the same length. We've got one line, 16 bars, all of the same length, but they're 16 meters long, so they need to be split. And the way we want to split it is, say for instance, the contract told you, I've got heaps of six meter bars on site. I would like to utilize them. Please, can you can you divide this up in six meters? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, if we click on this, and I'll move the spacing line just out of the way a wee bit, and maybe for this exercise, we'll just uh, introduce a little bit more cover here. So if we go 100, 
100 so we can just see the bar a little bit better yep that's that's better and we so happen to have 14 at 200 exact spacing so that works really really well what we can do now is as a first instance we can click on the bar we can go to splitter i load my standard to make sure that i've cancelled out any settings i may have made and now sometimes with these it's really hard to get uh, you know take that to snap to a grid and actually split the bar so the way you can do it is just 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 split the bar and then what you can do is click on the splitter and down on this little uh, icon you make sure that you are moved perpendicular to direction and then what you can do is you can just drag this and take the will then dra drag it in plane and then you are exactly on the grid line where you want to split now that we have a splitter there if I click on these bars, you can clearly see that we have different values here, but that doesn't matter in this case because we have to split again. So now it's very easy. Although these are offset now different lengths, if we now go click on the bar and we go splitter and we hover over this bar, it's actually measuring. You can see where the arrow is going to. It's measuring to the end of that bar. And if I go over this bar, it's measuring to the other bar. So now what we can do is we can just drag these along until we get to the six meter length. And once we've done that, we know that this bar is 60 meter. We can actually see it from the dimension there. And now we can go to the other side and we can drag our dimension once again to, to six meter and click there. And that will give us our two six meter um, stock bar lengths. So if we click on this, right click and we go inquire, you can see we have our 30 bars as stock lengths right there. And now these, the remainder of them are the tapered ones at the ends that we need to deal with and optimize. Now, again, it's very, very simple. Because we have a sloping edge, tapering becomes active. And because we have a splitter, tech is smart enough to take up the, 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 the optimization within the lap and not with the end of the bar. So if we just click on the set and we again go over to our tapered range, we introduce a distance. Well, let's see what the distance is first. So if I go F, just to take a measurement, go F and I measure from the end of this bar to the end of this bar. I'm looking for the Y. So it's the X, the Y. I beg your pardon, we're looking for the X, the horizontal dimension. Uh, it's 100 millimeters, so we know every bar at least is 100 millimeters longer than the other bar. So if we want to group at least three together, we need to do 100 millimeters, oh, 200 millimeters. So if I click on the bar and I go to step tapering and I say a distance, and because these are all straight bars, we're dealing with the straight here, I can say I want to apply a 200 millimeter tolerance there. And if I say enter, you can now see tickers adhering to the cover on this side but in yeah it's taking up the extra value within the lap and now if we look at it we've got our three bars grouped there as we suspected it would be and if i go f and i measure the distance on this one again we're dealing with our 700 which is our minimum and then that value and then lastly that value and you can see we're getting close to uh, you know the difference from 700 to 900 is already 200 millimeters and it's just under you can see 0.9 and 0.96 so the next bar will definitely be over 200 millimeters so that's why we've got a new group then so we can also go a step further and say uh, 200 is not enough let's click on that we actually want to force a number in this case again and we want to group four bars in the group and say enter and once we've done that we can see that Tickler is now grouped four bars, four bars, four bars, and three is the last group. And now if we click on the bar and we right click and we go to our inquire, we can see how much that bending schedule is reduced. We still have our stock length down the bottom as per the contractor's request. And then we've got groups of four and then we've got two groups of three. And the reason why that's not the same, it's again, you can see it's that minute difference in length uh, that we have on the two sides this one is shorter you know it's like opposite taper so if i click on that bar we can see that this group uh, if we look at this bar is 2760 and that bar is 39 this one's 2870 this one is 2760 so it's it's just the way it is because of the shape of the slab but that is very much reduced and um you know hopefully you know uh, this will sort of clarify and uh, give you guys a bit of confidence on how to use uh, tapered ranges, how to apply the settings uh, to get your rounded values on your bars, and uh, you know, uh, also understand that the tapers is, is preferably taken up within a splitter and not a single bar because uh, you know you will encroach on your concrete cover rules. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next video.